Hi, good morning. A little bit of dolly crochet today. And today's model is ta -da, my vintage Cindy. Now, it's the little hat that we're going to be making today. It's sort of, I know, like a Baker Boy style hat with a little button on the side and things like that. She's also sporting this little cozy cardigan, which is something else I might do as a video because it is so simple. Just a couple of seams to sew up and you've done near enough. So that was quite a fun to make as well. Now I'm in the process of making a lot of things ready for Dolly Khan and I'm also doing UK BJD Khan later in the year. So I've got a lot of hats and things to make. So it set me off on top doing some new designs basically. So you will be seeing photos, etc., etc., coming up. So if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you'll start to see those. But this is one we're going to be doing today. Super, super easy. Don't forget UK terms though, because that will make a difference. I will put some basic sort of term differences uh, at the basic base of the description here. So please have a check those out. Or if you go on Google, get a sort of, can't think of the word, I was gonna say translation then, no, conversion chart, and it'll show you the different stitches. Same with hooks, you can get the conversion charts for those as well, so it's quite easy. Now, if you do make these, well, this one particularly, because I'm not doing this one yet, if you do make it and you pop a picture on Instagram, Facebook, etc., please tag me, just let me know you've done it. Uh, it helps me if you tag me, especially if you sort of tag in Octopudding and things like that, because then people can come over and have a look at my products. I've always said I don't mind people reproducing my items. Uh, I mean, obviously for personal use, it doesn't matter, but I don't mind you doing them if you're going to be selling them as well. But it would sort of, just a little bit of courtesy to just pop where you got it from. Uh, it means a lot to me when people do do that. And also it helps me as well. So I'm gonna to go top down now. We're gonna have a look at this little girl's hat, which I think is super, super cute. And we will see you in a second. So here we are with Cindy's little Baker Boy hat. As you can see, I've done this one in a variegated yarn. I'll just add a little button there just for a little bit of detail because I do love my variegated yarn. I like how the peak works with this because it does get sort of that sort of arch at the front. It's not a flat peak, so it's quite nice. Here is one that I've actually done in a plain yarn. So I quite like these sort of autumn-y colours. I know it's not autumn, but, but yeah, can you see if I do that, that's how you get that sort of nice, almost like a duck's bill, isn't it, sort of peak so it is like i say super easy to make if you're happy making granny squares you're gonna whip through this this is how easy it is this is a four ply yarn this one was a four ply sock yarn not a great deal difference between them but do watch your yarns because some are thicker and some are thinner even though they say they're the same product the actual hook we're going to be using is a three millimeter crochet hook there we are a little stitch marker obviously my needles my scissors that's all you need for this in fact you barely need those if you're sort of happy to count your numbers you don't really need your stitch markers etc etc so we're going to do another one in this because i'm doing a few getting ready as i mentioned for dolly Khan. and although cindy's not going to be uk bjd really because obviously it's the wrong sort of doll uh, there are dolls of those sort of sizes so i'll probably make other little dolls hats for them as well so here we go so we always start with our slip knot. Don't forget those UK terms though. And um, we'll just tighten it up. And we're gonna start this with just five chains. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Then we're gonna join with a slip stitch into that very first chain and it forms a ring. So in we go and pull it through and pull it through. So you see where the hole is? Watch that because that sometimes looks like the hole. So you do need to tighten up where your knot is. So make sure you're happy where you're going and just sort of give it a little stretch. And that's usually the easiest way of seeing it. And we're going to start with this pattern. It is trebles and double crochets we're going to be using. So we're going to start with three chain because that is going to count as our first treble. We're going to go yarn round and into the centre of that ring, we're going to do another treble. We're going to do that again yarn round into the center of the ring we have another treble so that's just like doing a granny square isn't it we're now going to do two chain so we've got one and we've got two and we're going to go back into that ring with our three trebles so we have one two and three two chain one two oh let's pull a bit of that yarn out and we're going to do three trebles again. Now, obviously, if you were doing a granny square, you'd do this four times. Well, we don't want it to be a granny square, so we're going to actually do five sets. 
So that's our third set. Can you see? So we have a three, we have a two chain, we have a three, a two chain, and a three. So it's three sets. Two chain in between each little set. And in we go again. So three trebles. One, two, and three. So that's the fourth one, but we need a fifth one. So two chain. And in again for three trebles. One, two, and three. So double check you got your right amount. We've got one set, two set, three set, four set, and five set. Now I'm not going to do two chain on this next one because I then come straight out with the next round from where this finishes. And if you do two chain, it sort of comes out at a weird angle. Uh, might sound a bit odd. Uh, you'll all have different ways of doing your granny squares. This is just the way that I do it. So if you're happy with the way you're doing yours, just make sure you get your five sets and then just set off from there. So I'm going to do a, just a slip stitch here to join. Now you think, oh, that's too small, the gap. When you do the next set, it opens it up. So here we go. We do three chain, which does count as our first treble. Now make sure you get in between this three and this three. So you need to be bang in the middle. And um, we're going to start with two trebles. So that gives us the equivalent to three, remember, because that three chains one. Can you see it opens up this gap already? We're going to do two chain and we're going to go back in the same space and do another three trebles. These are like your corners on your granny squares. Obviously, we're going to have more corners than a square. So here we go. Can you see how it's opened that up? If I'd have done like a, a chain, it would have been to one side and it just wouldn't have looked good. We're going to jump straight to this next corner and you're going to do that little set again. And the set is three trebles. So that's one, two and three. We're going to do two chain and we're going to do three more trebles in the same space. Can you see that? Yeah, pull a little bit more of that yarn out. Now, again, into the next corner space, the same combination. We have three, oh, we don't because I've dropped the stitches. We're going to have three trebles, two chain, and three trebles. So that's one treble, two treble, three treble, two chain, and three more treble into that same space. One, two, and three yeah you see we've got two more to do so just jump to the next hole and we're going to do three treble two chain and three treble and one more to go and cindy's holding my yarn as well now So three trebles, one, two, oh, we nearly dropped that one. That's three, just double check, one, two, three, yep, two chain, and three trebles, one, two, and three. So you can see we're all the way around now, so I do need to do a slip stitch into here. Make sure you get both bits and we didn't then that made it a little bit thin and we don't want that so there we go so we have our slip stitch so you can see the shape we're getting now it's a little bit hard to tell from the top of the hat because obviously then it's going to come round but you can see roughly where we are so we've done this one we've done this one and we need another round of just what i call a granny square round even though it's not a square is it so we're going to have another round so we start with our three chain, so one, two, and three, counts as a treble, and directly below, we're going to do two more trebles, one and two. So that is not a corner, that's a side. You can see where the corners are, where they have the two chain. Any other space, which you can see because it's flat, is your side one, and if it's a side one, you're only putting in three trebles. So corner, the corner is three trebles, one, two and three two chain and three trebles back into the same space because it's a corner isn't it one two 
and three. Okay, side neck, so it's just three trebles. corner three two three so it's three trebles two chain three trebles two chain and three trebles one two three one side one two and three Corner one, one, two, and three, two chain, and three trebles. So we're still corners on here. One, two, and three. Let's see where we are at. Yeah, so we've still got a little bit more to go. So the next one's just a side. So a side is just three trebles in the same space. One, two and three corner so it's a three two three so i sort of remember it in my own head you know if i'm doing patterns i'll sort of think of it in a way that works for me and then i'll continue round so three two three i know is a corner so to me that's three troubles two chain three troubles two chain then and three one two and three yeah, we've got one side left, so which is just a three. And a last corner, which is going to be my three, two, three. I have to be careful, I've just noticed another ball of wool is attaching to this one because I've got it sort of hanging over there. Let's put the wool there, that might be a little bit easier. So what did I get? Three, so I need a two. And a one, two, and three, and slip stitch join. And we're going to have a little look at what we've got. So you can see how we got the shape coming. So again, we'll double check on our hat. So we've done this one set to start. We've done a set of what I'm going to call a granny round. And then we have another one. But then we're going to change because we need the hat to pull round, don't we? In fact, let me take this one off, Cindy, and we can try it on her. Now, if you're wanting to make this for a smaller doll, I would have probably omitted that last round. Because if you look, if I sit Cindy up, you can sort of see, because I want the hat to sort of sit comfortably around her, Oh, I nearly pulled it off her head then. Um, I need it just a little bit wider than her head. So if that was a Barbie head, that is, that's going to sit very, very wide. I'm trying to work out what that is. I think it's actually my hair that's stuck in there. Oh, dear. So, you know, you've got to work out on your doll. But I want it now to start curving around. And because it's a Baker Boy style hat, I don't want it tight. I want it so I can sort of like push it down if necessary and things like that. So I'm happy with that for a Cindy, but you might need to bring it in and just only do the two rounds if it's a Barbie. You will need to experiment with that. That's the problem. So many different dolls are so many different head circumferences and depths and things like that. It does make it difficult sometimes, but it still gives you a rough idea how it actually works. So hook back in. And what I'm going to do now is there's going to be no corners. The corners are going to go away. And we're just going to do two trebles into every space. That's it. Simple as that. So two, three chain. I was going to say two chain then. Three chain counts as our first treble. So then I just need one more, don't I, in that space. Yeah, that's it. So then a two, 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 all the way around. So two trebles. There's no chain in between or anything. Just two trebles all the way. And you'll see instantly it is starting to curve round to get us a little bit of shaping going there. So two trebles. Then just, I know it's a corner, but it's just still two trebles. Otherwise, you won't pull it round to fit the doll's head. It feels a bit weird when you've been doing corners because you desperately want to carry on doing corners when you see it. But we need to sort of make ourselves be strict and it's just two trebles in every space again 
how quick this is coming together. As I say, it's a real super quick little hat. Um, I do like to make my hats in sort of nice yarns though, so it's nice when uh, you can do that. Oh, what am I doing? My hands are a little bit cold. I wish the weather had suddenly warm up a bit. Um, because, well, ours is an old type house and it just doesn't warm up that well. And it's not good for your hands when you're crocheting. I've been known to sit with a hot water bottle on my knee while I've been crocheting. So in we go. Thought we were going to get some warmer weather. It was quite nice and then it went really cold again. And now somebody said to me yesterday that we're looking at snow in March. Well, oh, okay. We've had snow in March before though, so it's not unusual, but it's supposed to be spring coming up, so it would be nice. Although the kids do get excited when it snows, which is always nice as well. I must admit, I get excited when it snows. I don't like being out in it, but I like to look at it. It does look very pretty. So we're at the end now, so we need to do a slip stitch join, don't we? Right, slip stitch join. Can you see how it's curved round? I recommend you push it out that way okay because otherwise it makes it hard to work with so we're starting a new round so we need to start with our three chain now this is our second round of just two trebles in each space so this is the last round of these so just two in every space I mean, it's a bit easier to see now because you're not looking at corners, you're only looking at spaces, but it will curl around on your fingers a little bit. So just sort of keep pushing it outwards. Bit more yarn out. Keep going. you can't really see where your beginning is when it's like this i mean obviously you'll hit when you get to it you'll you'll know it but uh, sometimes you sort of like to look ahead of yourself and because it curls round you can't do that mm, nearly there look that's where i started isn't it and so it's just difficult to see so twos and twos just two trebles in every single space. I think we're almost there, aren't we? Ta da! This is the last one. Well, the last one of this part, anyway. So that's my two trebles and I'm going to join with a slip stitch. Now we're going to be moving on. You can see we've got like a, a sort of a little hat shape. Let's show you how it sits on our head. Can you see? But I want it to be a bit loose. That's why, as I say, I went that little bit wider than her head. Because I think a Baker Boy hat does sort of sit like that. In fact, what would look cute, which is what I didn't do, and perhaps I should, is put a button in the centre because you see that in those sort of caps. In fact, I think I might have to get my buttons out again. I mean, these are quite small buttons. Um, it doesn't matter really because for this style hat you could have a massive button you could have a flower you, you could do all sorts it's it's okay with that sort of style hat so you can see it's coming together nicely we've now got some double crochet rounds now this is if you want to bring your stitch marker in which I will because I'm talking it's a good time to bring it in but I'm gonna sort of just a little little penny farthing this time which is thought was cute so I'll pop it in there and I'm going to do just four rounds of one double crochet into every single stitch now this first round is a bit weird now you can go in every stitch but I'm a little bit odd the way I do mine because I think well there's two stitches there then there's just a space that's not really a stitch there's two stitches and a space it wasn't a chain remember so it's not a stitch so I actually like to go one double crochet in the sort of where the two is and then I like to go in that space as a stitch as well I just think it neatens it up so I go one with the double crochets, double crochets, the trebles even, and I go one in the space. You can just pick up every single stitch if you want. However, this, this works for you. You know, I mean, you might already do what I do, but basically the pattern, if it was made into a pattern, it would just say 
one double crochet into each treble that is what we're going to do so again it's quite quick to do this bit then the, the double crochets do take longer than the trebles well they feel like they do i think it's because it doesn't look like it's growing as fast whereas uh, with a treble it grows faster but i mean theoretically it should take it should be actually quicker than uh, a treble because you've not got all that wrapping round of the hook as well more yarn out I didn't actually go in the space on that one, did I? I don't know why I like going in the space rather than in the stitch. I just think it sort of makes it a bit neater. Oops. Ta -da. So we're round already. Look how quick that was. So that is round one. Round two is going to be easier because it's just in the top of each double crochet. There is a space one there, though, I did need to do. So off we go. So this is round number two. And we need four in total. So I'm going to speed up a little bit because probably what some of you will do is pause me and just do your rounds and then come back to when I do the, sort of the shaping bit or something like that. Uh, I know some of you may be slowing me down or I say stop, pause, all that sort of thing. Stop, start. Should I say not stop, pause, can you? Whichever works best for yourself. So round two is not far off done. And then as soon as we've done these four rounds, you're basically just shaping the peak. And you're not near enough done then. Well, you are done. Just a little bit of sewing in a few ends, maybe a button or a flower or however you want to decorate it. And you'll be finished. Round two, coming up. Ta -da, that's two rounds then. So you can see it's sort of starting to sort of flatten off nicely there. So we've still got two more rounds to do. So this is the start of round number three. I am going to remember what round it is because I'm not going to write it down. <laughs> I'm terrible. I have to have a pen and paper with me all the time. Um, especially when I'm, well, obviously when I'm making a pattern, I need pen and paper. But I need to mark off because I either get distracted or I do something else or somebody talks to me or something like that and I forget where I am. But it is only four rounds. I'm sure I can remember this. I keep saying three in my head while I'm talking to you. That still doesn't mean I wouldn't forget. But yes, we're definitely round three here. When we've done round four, we'll have a little look on how it sits on Cindy's head. I say it'll give you an idea. Oh, well, a little mermaid come into the shop there. A little mermaid. Made that ages ago. My grandson's fascinated by it. It's just one of the smaller things I made. Just got caught in the wool, so I'll pop her back up there out of the way because the theory is i do want to make some more miniatures which i've not made for a long time and i do enjoy working with the tinies so i do need to get some work done right so that was round three last round off we go all the way around back to our penny farthing and then we'll get that peak made looking good my table's a mess at the moment that's why i keep catching things i'm just looking up again it's decided it's going to wrap itself around that uh, yarn again it's the yarn i used to make the little dog coat because i've made them but i've got to sew the ends in so the yarn is still sat on my table getting ready to finish any detailing So many half projects, which I'm sure you, most of you will be exactly the same as me. You sort of start one project, then you're off on another one. 
right my yarn split there if it splits always take the stitch out two seconds to do a couple of extra stitches isn't it so it's really not worth oh we've got the sun coming down now and look i have some stripes on my table i cannot win one minute is there and one minute it's not so we've got some we've got some stripy tables here because i've opened my venetian blind because it gives great light but now i'm gonna have to alter it so i'm just gonna pause you there a second Right, I'm back. I've what I've done, I've just sort of tilted the blind up a bit. So I can't win. <laughs> the light in here is sometimes, sometimes absolutely fabulous. Then I go to do another video and it's absolutely appalling. Never mind. Right, so that's our four rounds done. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out now. We don't need it. And I said I'd try it on our Cindy, didn't we? So let's sit her up like that. And just sneak it on her head. Now, it looks a bit weird like that. But again, the whole point of a Baker Boy hat is it needs to sort of flatten out a bit doesn't it so you do need to sort of play about with it a little bit so you get like a slouch but we're going to have our peak here now so let's do the peak again couldn't be any simpler let me just check this yarn's not going to catch in that which it is doing isn't it get over there wool. right so we are going to be doing in our front loop only now let me just double explain that i like a needle when i'm explaining this one obviously with the stitch you can see there's the two pieces, yeah? One piece and two. so we've got front and we've got back. I only want to work in this front part, okay? And each stitch is going to be in there and we are going to be doing, I'm just reading what I've put here, we're going to be doing three trebles in each for the next five stitches. So yarn round, in we go, pull it through, one, two and another two in that stitch as well yep so we have three stitches in one three trebles so that's our first one our second one front loop only and we're gonna have one two and three front loop only this is number three with three one two and three our fourth stitch with three trebles we're gonna have one two three so if you're not sure where, how many you've just done at that point they're easy enough to see because can you see how it stretched the stitch quite a lot so we have one two three we have four sets i need another set don't i so yarn round front loop only and three trebles Putting three in each is what forces it into sort of like that duck beat shape because it sort of curves it fractionally. That's why I've done it. I'm now going to be doing, let me get it right way around, a double crochet round. Okay, so off we go. I'm just double checking if I did do that on the peak or not. I did, yes. I do sometimes and I don't others. It depends on the hats I'm doing. So down we go for our double crochet. And we're going to do a one double crochet into every stitch, including over the peak, because it just firms it up a little bit, because the trebles can be quite soft stitches. So just one all the way around. Yeah, I think my job after this, apart from sorting the video out on the computer, is to sit and do some finishing off, some sewing up and putting details on. Little bits and bobs like that, because I just made a set of bucket hats as well, ready for DollyCon for Cindy size. Um, and I've got all these little flowers to sew on. And then I wanted to make some bags to match, so I really do need to uh, get a shifty on. DollyCon's not till July though. But it's amazing how fast it comes and the other one's not until October. Um, but obviously, if I hopefully sell some of my things at Dollycon, um, I will need to sort of make some more items, won't I? Right, so we're at the peak now. So I want to go over this peak as well. So one double crochet into every treble over that peak. And I say it just stiffens it. It just neatens the edge up. It just sort of finishes it off a little bit. Sometimes I will use slip stitches, but it depends on sort of how you need the, the peak or the brim or something like that to sit, which one you would use. And I want this to be able to stretch a little bit so I can shape it. So I need it to be double crochets. If I did it with slip stitches, um, it would make it quite rigid, which is great if you're doing sun hats and the likes, but not if you're doing something like this. Right, well, there we go. Slip stitch into that very last stitch. And we 
have done you have another hat Cindy I mean I'm actually going to be keeping this one for myself because I do really do like that although I'm sort of liking these as well the problem I make the hats and then I think oh I need to keep one of those for mine um then I have to make another one and things like that so let's get that fastened off so all we've got is two ends to sew in, this one and this one. You can use them if you're careful. I think, did I do it on this one? Yeah, I actually used the yarn to sew the button on here. So you can use the yarn to sew it on, or you need a little bit of sort of sewing thread, embroidery thread, something like that. So there we have it. And as I say, you can shape it because it is like it is. You can either sort of sit it up flat, but I quite like that curve because I think that's what a lot of Baker Boy hats have on. So let's see how it goes, Cindy. Are we okay with it? Oh, that's going to get in the way for us a minute. But yeah, I like to shape it. I think with all the sort of crochet or knitted hats and things like that, when you put them on your dolls, you do need to shape them to sort of give that little bit of character like somebody who would be wearing them. So you get like a slight slouch, you can see. And then we have this nice sort of peak. So if you're doing some photos, just sort of shape it out and then do it from there. So I now need to find some little buttons uh, to finish them off. So that is it. How easy was that? That is our Cindy's new hat. Um, I have all the crochet. I do need to get some Easter crochet. I bought a chocolate orange the other day because I need to do another chocolate orange cover. Because um, I don't know whether you've seen it on my other videos but i do have a book coming out in july and i can tell you what it is anyway now because it's already on amazon for pre-order it is what they call chocolate cozies so i've actually now put a section on my youtube and all my chocolate oranges chocolate sort of for a rocher covers all the chocolate covers shall we say i've done on a playlist now that is chocolate cozies because i'm going to start using that term as that is the term that the publishers wanted to use for my book so it's chocolate cozies ago so i need to make a new one though for easter and i can't make up my mind i think i might do a little sheep i'm not sure i can't make up my mind but that is what's going to be coming up soon because if i don't easter's going to be here and will be well be christmas before i know it so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that i hope you are going to make some don't forget to tag me. I love to see it. I love to see the different colours you all use and, you know, little tweaks and how you make it individual for you. I just love to see that because most of my patterns I do here on YouTube are what I class as the basics, a sort of foundation for you then to go mad with your designs if you want to. So that's all from me today. See you very soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I will be back with some more crochet very soon. Bye bye for now.